What's going on, Cold Water Nation? It's Jeff, and today I'll be showing you how to tie a dust bunny. The dust bunny, developed by Richard Strollis, was developed to match the tiny stoneflies of early spring. Typically, this pattern would be tied on a flat shank hook size 16 or 18, but I like my flies to play double duty if they can, so I prefer to tie my take of the dust bunny on a curved shank hook so they can also pass off as mayfly emergers. So let's head over to the vise and get started. Yeah. There he goes. Oh my god, look at that! Look at that the worm is an effective and very deadly fly. What's up guys, my name is Brian, and I'm Jeff, and you're watching Empire Coldwater. Let's, Let's rip, rip some lips. lips. This video is brought to you in part by Upstate Excursions, and by Black Dog Outdoor Sports. To start tying my variation of the dust bunny, I will grab a size 18 clink hammer hook and get that settled into my vise with the eyelet level. Then I will take my 8 dot black thread and start taking wraps down the shank of the hook, stopping before the bend. Then I will snip away my tag end of thread before continuing to make wraps of thread well down into the bend of the hook. Then I will take wraps up into the midsection of the fly. From here I will take a length of gold brassy wire and tie that in starting at where I had left my thread previously and then down the bend of the hook. Once the wire is secured I will grab one of my natural turkey feathers and strip off a bayet from the stiffer side of the feather before tying in the bayet by its tip and wrapping my thread back up to the midsection of the hook. Now I will wrap the biot around the hook very carefully until I get up to the midsection of the hook before securing the biot in place with a few tight thread wraps. Next I will take the wire and make open wraps around the hook over the biot to add texture flash, and to further develop the segmentation of the fly. Once the wire has gotten to my thread, I will take tight wraps behind and in front of the wire to secure it before helicoptering off the excess wire. Now I will grab two CDC feathers of equal size and tie them in by their stem with the tops of the feathers pointing in the direction of the head of the fly before cutting away the excess. Then I will take wraps of thread towards the head of the fly stopping about one hook eye gap away from the head before bending the CDC feathers back and taking wraps back towards the midsection of the fly. Then I will take a few wraps behind the CDC feathers to prop them up slightly. Next I will add in the legs of the fly by taking some black rubber leg material and measuring one of the front legs to be about the length of the wing before tying it in securely and then snipping off the excess to become the back leg equal to the length of the wing. Then I repeat that process to make a front and back leg for the fly on the other side of the body. After legs are tied in securely, I will pull the front legs back before taking several wraps at the head just behind the eye of the hook to develop a taper to the front legs. 
Now I will take a length of yellow craft foam that I have cut into eighth inch strips and tie it in starting just behind the front legs before taking a few more wraps in front of the back legs to create a three segment body on top of the hook. Then I will snip away the excess leaving the third section to be about equal to the segment over the head of the fly. After the excess foam is cut away, I will pull the legs back before taking a few wraps to get the front legs to spread out a little farther from the body. Next I will grab my whip finishing tool and get that started before dangling my bobbin so I can pull the legs back on the fly to complete a single whip finish. When I do a whip finish this way, I make sure to pull on my thread to guarantee the whip finish is secure. Then I will cut away my thread. And lastly, I will add a dab of head cement over the whip finish before adding another dab of head cement to the underside of the fly to add strength to the pattern. So now you have one completed dust bunny for your fly box for those early spring hatches of stoneflies. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like what you saw today, consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next time. Until then, tight, tight lines, lines everybody. everybody.